and welcome to my YouTube video. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use a swatch and your measurements to create a schematic and then calculate how much yarn you're going to need for a sweater project. We're going to start out by looking at our swatches um, and I'm going to show for a swatch knit flat versus a swatch knit in the round. There's not much difference but you'll need to know that. So I've knitted these swatches. These are the gauge that I prefer for this particular fabric. I like this fabric for my sweater. I already determined that by experimenting with needle sizes until I found the needle size that I wanted to create the fabric in this yarn. Then I blocked the swatches. This one was knit in the round. Same thing. So this one has twice as many stitches cast on but knit for the same number of rows as this one. So the first thing we will do is measure these swatches from the width and the length. So the width and the length. And I have pre-measured these and measured how many square inches the swatch is. Now, if you're working with centimeters, you'll just figure out the square centimeters. This particular swatch measures 3.75 inches wide, 2.75 inches tall, and the square area is 10.3125 inches. That's square inches. This swatch measures exactly twice as wide and is the same height and therefore has twice the square area. The next thing we're going to do is weigh the swatches. And this swatch it weighs 4.8 grams, so we'll document that, 4.8 grams. This swatch weighs 9.8, slightly more then twice this one. Twice would be 9.6. So if you were doing in the round, you would document that. From this point forward, I'm going to use this the information from this swatch to move forward. So we'll remove the scale. So now we know the next thing we need to do is figure out how many grams there are per square inch. If I have 10.3125 square inches and I have 4.8 grams for this swatch. So I'm going to divide 4.8 grams divided by 10.3125 and that equals 0.4654 grams per square inch and you need to write that down. In fact I'm going to write that down right here. So I know that I'm getting 4.4654 grams per square inch. Okay, that's my important number. So we're done with the swatches. The next thing that we need to look at are, are, is our schematic. Then for this particular one, we're going to be making a yoke sweater. And the particular measurements that I'm going to need for calculating the yardage I have filled in. And these are my measurements. So I have a bust of 37, and I'm going to add 3 inches of ease to make it a 40-inch circumference sweater. So I'm going to, on my diagram over here, I wrote 40 inches for the circumference of the sweater. The next thing I'm going to need is the back neck to hip which H, which is H on this diagram, which is 22.5. So that's from here to here on this diagram I wrote in 22.5. Then I need my upper arm circumference, that's right here, and I wrote it in here. I'm not going to put my wrist circumference in, and I'll tell you why in just a minute. So really, these are the only numbers that you need. One, two, three. In order, oops, one more. We need to know the length from the back neck to the cuff, right? So that's my arm length. That's K on this diagram, and that is 30 inches. So from here all the way to here 
is 30 inches. I need that number. Okay, so now we're done with this. And we're going to move on to this page. In, on this page, what I did was simply divide the whole yoke into easily measurable areas by making them square. Now you can get into great detail by creating a um, circular and figuring out the circumference uh, and the area of the circle. And then you can have this slope here and figure out the, between the narrowness of the wrist and the wideness of the shoulder. But I prefer to not do that. I want to make it simple and easy. Keep it simple, right? So I just drew a box around the whole body. And I know that this length right here is going to be 22.5 inches from here to here. And I know that my circumference is 40 inches. So I can figure out the square inches of the body very easily just by multiplying 40 inches by 22.5. And that gives me actually 900 square inches. I have that as step one here. Body circumference times the length. And that equals 900 square inches for me. Then the next thing we're going to look at is the sleeve circumference, the upper sleeve circumference, and the, for me that was 15.5 inches, and then the length of the sleeve. But how do we figure out this length right here? That's nothing that we measured on the body. What we do is we take this line right here is actually half the circumference, so from here to here is 40 inches because all the way, I mean from here to here is 20 inches because all the way around is 40, correct? So half of that's 20 and half of the 20 from here to here is 10 inches. I know my total sleeve length is 30 inches, correct? 30 inches. So the length from here to here is going to be 20 inches. And I'm not going to worry about the cuff, the wrist being smaller around because I would, to tell you the truth, I'd rather have extra yarn than not enough. So now I know that I have 15.5 inches circumference by 20 inches in length. So I multiply 15.5 times 20 and then I multiply that by 2 because I have two sleeves, correct? So the sleeve circumference times the length times 2, and for me that equals 620 square inches. Then I add those two numbers together. That gives me 1520 square inches. That's my total area is going to be 1520 square inches. Okay? That is my target number for square inches. I take that number up here to the grams per square inch, 1520 times 4654 equals, that's going to give me, let's see, I'm going to use my calculator here now. So we're going to have 1520, 1520 times point four six five four equals seven hundred and seven grams. Point four oh eight grams. And that's what I need because now I know if I'm buying hundred gram skeins, I need at least seven, possibly eight. I always buy one extra skein just for swatching. So in this case, I would buy eight 100 gram skeins or balls or hanks or whatever you want to buy in your yarn. If you're buying 50 gram skeins, then you would get 16, right? So this is how you figure it out. Now if I compare this to the results in Ann Bud's book, Top Down Sweaters, for my stitch gauge 
and the same calculations, she comes up with a little over 1,200 yards. She comes up with 1,210 yards. If I'm getting 707 grams, and that is a 200-yard skein, that would give me 1,400 yards, correct? So I'm getting about 200 yards more than what Ann Bud gets, which is one skein, which is okay because I would rather have too much yarn. And this is very simple. If you don't have any other way to figure out how much yardage you need, this is a very simple system for doing that. And you can always double check um, in the book if you have it. So there you go. This is in conjunction with a knit along that I'm doing on Ravelry. It's called I Tag yoke i-t-a-g which stands for it takes a guild yoke and we're doing a yoke sweater from the ground up we're starting with a swatch and our schematic and we're building each person's building their own sweater from the top down with any design elements that they want any yarn weight from fingering to bulky any stitch design and each work will be an individual work of art. You're free, to, you're free to join me in that knit along. I'll put, post a link down the video. And I'll also add information on how to um, join in in the groups that I belong to. I have a group on Facebook called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. And a group on Ravelry called Knitting with Suzanne Bryan. And you're welcome to join me there. Take care and happy knitting.